Hello there, my name is Ismaus. Uh, so tomorrow I'll be showing you how to make this scene in Blender 2.8, but for now I want to show you how to make uh, those dust particles or those uh, paper particles that you see flowing in the air. So the tutorial or the yeah the video premiere is going to be on my second channel, on this channel, Top Channel 111 tomorrow. Uh, let me see. Uh, my local time will be 6 p.m. So uh, East Eastern Daylight Time will be 11 uh, EDT and then all 16 Central European time so you can convert that to your local time uh, to see if you want to chat with with me and the, and the community uh, live in the video premiere yeah so today I just wanted to show you how to make those dust particles uh, because I've been getting a lot of questions on how to do uh, that yeah so let's dive in so I have a blender project here that we're going to use and the first thing I'm going to do is create a particle instance uh, for example the paper particle we're going to be using and I'm just going to make it keep it very simple just use a plane let me turn on my shortcuts here just bend it a bit and then shade it smooth so that it's, uh, it looks nice like paper something like that is enough now I can add a cube uh, this is going to be the volume uh, in which our particles are emitted so let me just grab that bring that up like that and uh, now I can let me turn on random colors I usually like to work like that because uh, it makes it easier to see uh, the different objects in your scene and uh, now we can go to the particle system add a new particle system and uh, if we play back you can see we are emitting particles already I want to be emitting this here but before we start with this uh, you can see that uh, in my video and see that uh, the particles are not falling down too, fa too fast so to do that I'm just going to go to the forces force field uh, and uh, field weights and uh, reduce the gravity for a second and uh, before we start instancing these papers I want to show you something here yes, let me just use a cube here uh, as our instance object so to do that Let's go to under render, change this to object and select the cube as our instance. I'm going to scale this up in size so that we can see everything. I also don't like show, uh, viewing the emitter as I'm working or rendering the emitter itself. I just want the particles. So I'm going to go to the object data and under instancing, turn off viewport instancing, uh, show instance in viewport or, and also turn off, turn it off in render because I don't want to render it in the uh, instance as well. Now you can see how the particles are being emitted without seeing uh, the emitter. Uh, another thing you will notice is that uh, all the particles are popping into existence and also popping out of existence, which is not something very real realistic. Uh, you, you want uh, the particles to fade in and fade out uh, so that they don't show in the render as like they are popping, they are teleporting into the scene. You can see that uh, you never really see any of the particles just disappearing uh, instantly or appearing instantly. They just fade into uh, the scene seamlessly. Uh, so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, let me first reduce uh, the number of particles so that we can focus on a few, maybe 10 particles at a time uh, so that it, we can I can easily demonstrate what I'm talking about here. And we play back, you can see how everything, all the particles are just popping into existence and then popping out of existence. Now to avoid that, we can go and uh, uh, text, scroll down to textures and then uh, add a new texture. Let's go into that texture and uh, we want to use a blend uh, texture. Uh, what this will do is uh, create a transition uh, from one scale to another, which will make uh, the particles fade into existence and uh, fade out of the of existence. Uh, we don't see it right now because if we go to the uh, to the settings, uh, to the texture settings, under influence, this is where we affect how the texture is affecting uh, the particle system. Uh, you can see that uh, the influence is set only to the time and uh, right now I don't want that. Uh, what I want is to affect uh, the size. Now you can see immediately checking that will affect uh, the particles here and uh, this is usually demonstrated uh, if your emitter is a plane so I'm just going to go in here and delete parts of this mesh so that we are only focused and let me UV unwrap this as well so that you can see what I'm about to demonstrate to you yeah, so this is what we have now if I increase the particle count uh, 
not sure if it's going to be very visible here. Let me go to the texture. Uh, if you go to the mapping, right now we are using generated co uh, coordinate mapping, but you can choose between different uh, texture coordinate mapping. So if we choose between, uh, from uh, from uh, generated to UV, uh, because in the UV, uh, if we unwrap this, uh, let me just see if I can show you this uh, gradient. It's fading from left to right. Let me just turn this back to uh, textured. Let me show this instancing and uh, add uh, the same gradient in the texture node just to show you how this looks. So if I add a gradient texture, preview that and uh, preview the UV channel, you can see what we have. Uh, we have the same gradient uh, that we are using here. Okay, maybe it might be, let me see if I'm looking at this correct seems to be flipped around so actually i don't think it is uh it's uh in the viewport it looks flipped out, around but uh, in the uh in the uv editor it's exactly how it is here uh it's coming from the left to the right and uh, from the left to the right so if if i wanted to do this i would just have to flip this or mirror this on the x-axis okay so that it reflects exactly how it looks here so basically what is this is this gradient is doing or this texture is doing it is assigning a value of zero to one uh, to all the particles uh, zero would be uh, a scale of zero making the object really small and uh, a value of one making the object full scale uh, compared to uh, in relate relative to the scale we set here so if i scale this up you can see it's uh, controlling that it's influencing that but uh, we don't want this kind of uh, we don't want just the particles on the left or we don't want to control the size of the particles using uh, UV texture coordinates. What we want to do is influence uh, the particle scale using uh, the particle coordinates. So th this means that uh, the, uh, the scale or this transition or this texture is going to influence uh, the particles individually instead of influencing them depending on the UV texture coordinate mapping of the mesh. So now you can see that uh, the particles start off small and then increase to a scale of one uh, because that's the gradient we are having here and uh, this texture is no longer that useful to us it was just for demonstration uh, so i can just get rid of that and, uh, let me bring this back turn off uh, show instancing you can see now our part let me reduce the particle count again just so we can see what's going on much easier can see that uh, our particles are fading in and then fading out that's what you want you don't want them to pop into existence uh, because that's not very realistic now they are still fading out or just popping out of existence <coughs> which is also not realistic so to uh, to counter that we have to just go back to the gradient and uh, just replicate this transition on the end here so we can go under the colors and just bring this up here Turn on color ramp so that we can control uh, this gradient. And uh, I'm just going to bring this node here and then add another node at the back here. Just change the color to black and uh, remove any alpha. Just now control this positioning. Let me just make this have an alpha channel. You can even play with the interpolation here just to show you now you can see how uh, they go into existence and then pop out of existence now it doesn't really look that realistic seeing them uh, increase in size and uh, decrease in size but uh, if you have really small particles like what i had in this scene and uh, you don't really see that effect if you have small particles and a uh, lot of them and a large number of them you won't see that uh, it will look very nice i think uh, so now, instead of using the cube, we're going to use uh, the instance object we created here, our paper object. And uh, let me also extrude this back into a cube volume so that we can emit these and uh, increase uh, the particle count back to 1000. And uh, bring back the objects. Let me delete this cube and uh, select my paper as my instance. 
Now you can see that uh, we have our papers. Uh, the problem is that they're just falling down uh, due to gravity and I don't want really want, I don't want that. Okay, so I think I've reduced the gravity already. But uh, if they're falling too fast, just reduce the gravity. Now we, they're just falling straight down. We want them to kind of rotate and uh, have some turbulence. As you can see right now, they're just uh, oriented to the uh, to the sky and they don't do really be they're not behaving like papers so to do that to give them some rotation you can turn on rotation here and uh, if you don't see anything happening try randomizing and you'll see you have some random effect but uh, they won't be rotating in space as you expect them uh, to do that you need to have dynamic turned on and also give them uh, an angular momentum or angular velocity uh, this will give them some slight rotation. Now I can also scale down the the particles just a bit. I can see that uh, they are behaving uh, somewhat like paper. And what they are lacking is some turbulence. So let's add in a turbulence force. Uh, we should give them some turbulence. Now I can just bring that in. Go to the physics tab and increase the force just a bit. Don't give it a too high force. Let's use something like five because I don't want them to just be too chaotic. So let me just use something like five. And if you have multiple forces, for example, if you have a wind force, let me add to wind, uh, wind, 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 like this. Let me just rotate it like this. And uh, let's increase the strength to about 100 and see. Uh, if you have wind like that, that, like that, but you want the turbulence to have more effect on the particles than the wind, just increase uh, the flow source here, and uh, uh, the turbulence will have more more effect on the on the particles than the wind. And now we can also increase the size, play around with the size, give it this size of ten, a strength of fifty, and see. And they are affected by the wind, but they are also affected by uh, the turbulence at the same time. Uh, let me also just go in and uh, reduce, increase uh, the lifetime so that they hang around for some time. And uh, maybe I reduce my strength for the wind or something like two. Uh, the, strong, the, the stronger the, the turbulence, uh, the more you start to see a pattern of of the turbulence. So 50 is too high, so let's keep it something like five, and uh, reduce the flow to something like two, so that uh, it's not uh, that high. Uh, we can also uh, bring back the gravitational force a little bit, so that uh, they fall. And uh, what I also like to do is uh, under the texture influence, I usually like to turn on uh, the gravitational or the force field, uh, the gravity force here, uh, so that the particles start off light, so they're not as affected, they're not affected by gravity that much until uh, they're about to die. So as they are, as they're about to die or disappear from the scene, uh, they start to be affected by the gravity more and more. So that's why if you want to do to have that effect, you can add that in. And, uh, yeah, so that's how you can make papers or whatever particles. So if you make these smaller, you can, if you make uh, your instance object smaller, you can uh, have these as dust particles. Yeah. Yes, thank you for watching. Again, don't uh, forget to turn in into the live stream to watch uh, how, how I made, how to make the entire scene from scratch. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching.